Welcome to the Wanderers History Podcast. My name is Vlad Zamfira, and today we'll talk about arguably one of the most influential video games in history about history. Age of Empires 2. Enjoyed, played, explored since the last millennium by tens of millions of people. For many children, history sadly was just another subject to study for tests, something that they didn't take a keen interest for various reasons. However, in 1999, something remarkable happened with Ensemble Studios releasing a much-improved sequel to the first Age of Empires game which came out in 1997. Age of Empires 2, The Age of Kings, would be a remarkable step, and I would say a founding stone in real-time strategy games that were essentially historical in nature. Released in 1999, it was a history game made interactive, and it was brought to your home and to your PC. The game would start with a first campaign, a tutorial with William Wallace, preparing for the Battle of Falkirk. Fun and light-hearted, with the rather black-adderish Scottish accents, it was an accessible introduction to the game, worth tens of hours of gameplay, the game all in all. Afterwards, the game would take you to Europe with the Joan of Arc campaign, followed by a third campaign in the Holy Lands, telling the story of Saladin. Moving forward east, you would play with the Mongols, a difficult campaign during Genghis Khan's era, and once that was finished, you ended up playing with the Teutonic Knights and Frederick Barbarossa, Holy Roman Emperor. William Wallace in Scotland, Joan of Arc and France, Saladin with the Ayyubids called Saracens in the game, Genghis Khan with the Mongols, and Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa. A vast, diverse campaign with notable names aimed to draw in the history casual as well as the history buff. Thus, the Age of Empires II, Age of Kings, sold more than 2 million copies within the first months. It was a hit not only in the United States, but also in the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and Japan. And with this success came the need to bring the first expansion called the Age of Conquerors. Released in August 2000, it brought up five new civilizations, the Aztecs, Mayans, the Spanish, Koreans, and Huns. It also added exciting new campaigns. The first one looked at Attila the Hun's rise to power. It was followed by you playing with the Aztecs, as it looked at Montezuma's defense against Cortes and the Spanish, only to play in the third campaign as Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, Castilian knight known as El Cid, who played an important role in the Spanish Reconquista. Diversity was a key point of this expansion, so instead of a fourth cohesive campaign, the developers came up with the Battle of the Conquerors campaign, a group of unrelated single scenarios, each based on a significant historical battle. Th- that included the Battle of Tour, the saga of Eric the Red, the Battle of Hastings, the Battle of Manzikert, the Battle of Agincourt, the Battle of Lepanto, 1571, the, B- the Battle of Yamazaki, and the Battle of Noriang. Unsurprisingly, It was a hit amongst fans, expanding the history database furthermore, resulting in a game that would be played year after year. The game ended up having such a dedicated fan base that 13 years after the release of the Conqueror's expansion, Microsoft Game Studios published a game developed by Skybox Labs called The Forgotten. The Forgotten Age of Empires expansion introduced five new civilizations, including the Italians, Indians, Slavs, Magyars, and the Incas. Seven campaigns, better, all updated gameplay, and AI that was substantially better, and was received with enthusiasm by fans. There were new campaigns, covering the stories of Alric, story of Bari, the Sforza campaign, Dracula, 
El Dorado, Priti Viraj, and the Battles of the Forgotten. All were, were well done and focused more on Italian campaigns along with southeastern European journeys, for example of the Valachian prince Vlad the Impaler, called Dracula for understandable reasons, in that campaign. Microsoft Game Studios saw great potential in this franchise, though Age of Empires 3 had also been released in 2005 and had been performing relatively well. However, two more expansions were developed for Age of Empires 2, looking at African and Southeastern Asian history. In 2015, African Kingdoms was released adding new civilizations, such as the Berbers, the Ethiopians, Malians, and Portuguese, covering the campaigns of Sunjata, Francisco de Almeida, Portuguese explorer, Yodit, and Tariq im Ziad. In December of 2016, the Rise of the Rajas expansion, set in Southeast Asia, added four new civilizations, the Burmese, the Malay, the Khmer, and Vietnamese, each with its own fully voice-acted campaigns. As a side note, this is the only expansion, apart from the definitive edition, that I've not played yet, but I'm looking forward to. In November of 2019, more than two decades after the release of The Age of Kings, the whole game with all the expansions had been remastered and all put in The Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, which also added a new campaign called The Last Khans, and yet again added four new civilizations, the Bulgarians, the Kumans, the Lithuanians, and the Tatars. This brought the total of playable civilizations in Age of Empires 2 to more than 30, from Franks, Celts, Italians, to Vietnamese, Aztecs, Portuguese, and Ethiopians. Even better was the fact that you had small informative section called History about these civilizations, a general history of the eras where the campaigns took place, warfare, bits on European and Asian and African societies. Now, of course, a game like Age of Empires 2 might seem a bit outdated. After all, it was a real-time strategy game developed in 1999, and it emits, just because of the limitations of the nature, elements such as diplomacy, expansive trade, societal issues, issues that other games like the Total War series or the Crusader Kings or Europa Universalis have speculated and are based on. But I will talk about those games in other episodes. With that in mind, it's important to note that for more than 20 years, Age of Empires 2 has continuously built upon an excellent game that did not require massive resources to play. It was accessible to a lot of people, if you had like a small laptop or a PC. The game kept growing despite the strong previously mentioned competition, and it has cemented its status as one of the all-time greats that made kids and adults alike love history more and want to read and research more about history. And for that reason, I consider Age of Empires 2, with all of its add-ons and expansions, as an important cultural ambassador of history to millions and millions of people. And I would recommend, if you already have the game, or if you have not played the game, to pay it a revisit and virtually go back to 2D Scotland, France, Mongolia, Ethiopia, Holy Lands, or the Holy Roman Empire. Thank you for listening to the Wondrous History Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this rather different episode. If you can, please hit that subscribe button below and stay tuned for more. Until then, all the best and stay safe.